A reading from the Gospel of Luke. All the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Typically, this parable is known as the prodigal son. And it's called the prodigal son, and it was named so by someone. And they named it that, using the word prodigal as someone who wastes a great amount, an extravagant waste. But I think a better title for this parable would be the prodigal community, the community of God, the prodigal God. Because the word prodigal really is a word to describe extravagant, radical, something not experienced before. I think this parable is not about either of the sons, but it is about the community of God. It's a community probably none of us will ever find totally. In fact, the story tells us that no matter how hard we try, we'll never find truly the perfect prodigal community of God, radical and extravagant. Because you see it in a real community, like the community we see, some go away. <clears throat> and they take part of the community with them. 
and they misuse it. And they misrepresent the community. That happens every day, doesn't it? The thing that's radical about the community of God is if they choose to come back, we'll throw the biggest party they've ever seen. We'll accept them as if they never left because we're so happy they came back. And we'll give everything that we have for this huge party. And we'll sing and we'll dance and we'll drink and we'll eat and we'll party for days. Now in the community of God, which is a real community, some of us won't like that. Not a bit. And we'll stand outside. And we'll be really pissed. You don't know anybody like that, do you? <laughs> but in the community of God, the community of God, We'll leave the party and go outside and beg that person to come back in and party. And even if they stand outside and stay pissed, the community of God continues to plead with them to come in and party. This story is about the prodigal God, the extravagant God, the community of God that embraces, takes back, and even leaves the part to go find those who don't want to be there. <coughs> the story may be about telling us something we can strive for and hope for and work for. And there'll always be those who leave and misrepresent us. And there'll always be those who are angry by what we're doing. But God will embrace both. That's pretty radical. I don't know any humans like that. Well, maybe a few. Most of them are in this room.